Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation G VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be featuring a Coridon team that recently won an official tournament over in Puerto Rico. Now, Coridon's not really being discussed very much right now, especially after Maridon won the very first official tournament of this format, but it's still really powerful. This team utilizes clear Amulet Coridon to deal massive amounts of damage while also ignoring Intimidate from Pokemon like Incineroar. You're also able to further boost your speed with Flame Charge, and the team also has Tornadus with Tailwind as well as a fast walking wake in order to deal massive amounts of damage and synergize nicely with the sun that Coridon sets up. As always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps down below, and thanks so much as always for joining me. If you enjoy, I'd really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's just dive into things. If you're interested in trying out the team, the rental code is on the screen, and there is a paste down in the description below. Like I mentioned, this team centers around utilizing Coridon to set up the sun, enabling both itself as well as Walking Wake, which is a really powerful attacker. You've got classic support from Pokemon like Rillaboom as well as Incineroar, and you notably also have this Golden Go. Golden Go is actually a really nice Pokemon on this team, because I find that a lot of times it's hard to respond to the pressure that Coridon and Walking Wake apply, as well as the setup potential that Golden Go has. So when you have both on the field, it's really difficult to figure out which one to focus your attention on. Finally, you also have a Focus Sash Tailwind Tornadus, which is pretty standard. The main thing to note here is that you do have Sunny Day on this Tornadus, which allows you to further enable Walking Wake and Coridon and also gives you an edge against opposing weather. Just for some quick context, this team won a special event, which is an official tournament that gives out championship points towards the World Championships over in Puerto Rico. It took place towards the beginning of May and had 45 players competing it, 6 rounds, and then a top 8. Of course, like I mentioned, Coridon was able to win the entire tournament, but you have a pretty diverse set of restrictors being used, a lot of ones that we've expected to do well. Maridon, Kyogre, Calyrex, Ice Rider, as well as Terrapagos, and the team in 8th place is also really interesting with ho -Oh here. So, yeah, I think Coridon's just a Pokemon that isn't being used as much right now, and for good reason. There are a lot of Pokemon in the format that actually counter it, but to see it win the entire tournament clearly shows that it is a Pokemon that still has a lot of potential behind it. So, just wanted to quickly give some context about this tournament. Breaking down each individual Pokemon, the first one to talk about is Coridon. Now, Coridon is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, its ability allows you to automatically set up the sun, and when sun is up, your attack is also increased. Combine that with a really good base attack of 135 and clear amulet, as well as access to strong moves like Flare Blitz and Collision Course, and this Pokemon can deal massive amounts of damage. It's not like Maridon since you don't have something like Life Orb or Choice Specs in particular boosting its damage output, but Coridon can kind of just stick on the field for a while and dish out consistent damage across the board. Of course, it threatens a lot of Pokemon with those one-hit knockouts, whether it be Collision Course onto Incineroar, or Flare Blitz onto something like Fluttermane or Rillaboom, and often it will get a two-hit knockout onto a lot of common Pokemon in this format. With this amount of EVs in speed, you are faster than Max B Tornadus by two points, and so you creep things that outspeed Tornadus by one point, and then the rest is distributed between HP, Attack, and Special Defense. Clear Amulet is just by far one of the best items on Coridon, because Intimidate and Incineroar in particular is everywhere, and this turns the matchup into Incineroar into a far more positive one. Uh, most people are going to run Flare Blitz, Collision Course, and Protect, and Flame Charge is really nice because it allows you to further boost Coridon's speed. This Pokemon is already really fast, so after you get a Flame Charge off, there are very few things in the format that can reliably outspeed it. And so, this Coridon is kind of just aimed to sit on the field, spread a lot of damage, threaten with one-hit knockouts, and also enable some other Pokemon, notably Walking Wake. Walking Wake, I actually think, is really slept on right now, and this thing just does so much damage. This is a speed booster set, so the idea is that when the sun is up, Walking Wake will outpace most things, and of course, you're able to threaten with massive amounts of damage through Hydro Steam, Draco Meteor Flamethrower. It's a Water Terra, so you can Terra to deal even more damage with Hydro Steam, and Life Orb is just the best item on this because it allows you to switch your moves while also being able to protect. And so, Crydon plus Walking Wake in itself is a good lead with this team if you feel like you can just outpace your opponent immediately. Tornadus Walking Wake, Tornadus Crydon, also all really viable leads. Uh, Tornadus Crydon allows you to immediately pressure with Tailwind and then deal a lot of damage. This is particularly valuable into opposing teams that also have Tailwind because then you can start flame charging and then just outpacing everything. Whereas Tornadus Tornadus Walking Wake, for example, uh, you can just set up Sunny Day immediately, and then Walking Wake can just immediately outpace things and deal a lot of damage. 
the classic support of Rillaboom and Incineroar continue to exist on this team. Not too much to say here, other than that one, with Rillaboom, you have high horsepower uh, instead of U-turn. Some people like running U-turn, of course, to pivot out, but high horsepower gives you some more coverage and allows you to deal super effective damage into steel types and fire types, for example. And Incineroar here is safety goggles with Will-O-Wisp. Assault Vest Incineroar is really common right now, but of course, Assault Vest is committed on the Rillaboom, and by having the Will-O-Wisp and safety goggles on Incineroar, you give yourself a much better matchup into Amoongus and Calyrex Ice Rider teams in particular with the Amoongus. Because a lot of times those teams will want to just use Amoongus to redirect and then set up Trick Room, but with this you can just burn the Ice Rider. The final Pokemon is Golden Go. Golden Go is so interesting because I feel like it always falls out of the format and then comes back in and then falls out and comes back in, but it fits this team really, really nicely. You've got double fake out support for it as well as Tailwind support from Tornadus. And of course, the idea is to ideally set up a nasty plot or two and then click make it rain. Fairy Terra helps defensively. You've got leftovers with Rillaboom, so this combination means that Golden Go can heal back a lot in just a matter of a couple of turns, especially when you throw Protect onto it as well. When playing with the team, I'm bringing Coridon into most matchups, although there are certain Ice Rider matchups where I think it actually makes sense to drop and you just go with Rilla, Incin, Walk. Walking Wake and Golden Go, but generally the first thing I ask is, okay, do I need immediate speed control from Tornadus? If the answer is yes, then I'll often go with something like Tornadus with one of Coridon, Golden Go, and Walking Wake. If I don't need that immediate speed control, then I ask, can I just overwhelm my opponent with offense immediately? The best way to do that in my eyes is probably something like a Walking Wake plus Coridon lead, and then just start dishing out huge amounts of damage. Incident Rillaboom, of course, can be led with anything on this team as well. Uh, so for example, I've, I've had games where I go Incident Coridon, get an Intimidate off, maybe Protect Parting Shot, then bring out Walking Wake to weaken my opponent side a little bit, then start attacking. Uh, Golden Go, I think, can be good as well, though this appreciates having Fake Out and Tailwind support a little bit more, since you're not just going to get big one-hit knockouts with this, generally, from turn one of the battle. But those are just a couple ways you can think about playing with the team. The tournament let this team, of course, one, it was also streamed, and so you can check out the Voss to see how the original team creator and champion used it in their games in the tournament. So, in terms of weaknesses, for Coridon, naturally, you really don't like going up against opposing weather, and rain in particular. So, I've lost games where my opponent had manual rain dance from something like Tornadus, for example. Maybe they had something like Kyogre. Pelipper, in particular, is a really annoying Pokemon for Coridon to go up against, and that's actually one of the reasons why Coridon usage has decreased, is because Pelipper is really common right now. It can change the weather into rain. You resist the fire and fighting type attacks, and you also thread in with super effective hurricane. And if cried on Terra's, then it can also go for super effective water type attacks. I've also had opponents who are really smart about baiting the Terra out from Coridon early. For example, they lead something like Fluttermane, and then Fluttermane makes uh, Coridon feel a little bit pressure to Terra, and then they have Pokemon in the back that can reliably just deal super effective ground or water type damage, for example, or rock. Uh, and so those are just a couple of things that I've struggled against when using Coridon in particular. I've also think that this Pokemon can be hard to use if you don't pick up a one hit knockout with it, you're often going to take a lot of damage in return, especially because Flare Blitz is a move that deals recoil, and you're going to be clicking that a lot. And so keep that in mind. Uh, the recoil thing is another point where I think often I'm like, oh, Crydon can survive an attack, but then I don't factor in the fact that you take so much recoil from Flare Blitz. So keep in mind that you're often going to be chipping yourself away with Flare Blitz, and that can be really scary to deal with. This team, I think, relies often on Tailwind, and so you also have to be a little bit careful about, like, ultra-fast Pokemon on the opposing side. For example, Speed Booster Fluttermane, Speed Booster Iron Bundle. A bundle in particular, kind of a random one, but, like, Freeze Dry hits Tornadus, Rillaboom, Walking Wake, uh, Coridon all for super effective damage, and so it can be a little bit scary to deal with as well. Uh, and I think I've also had games where I, like, try to overwhelm my opponent quickly enough with offense, with Tailwind up, but then they're actually able to effectively stall out the Tailwind, uh, and then things can get pretty spooky as well. Walking Wake is an amazing Pokemon, but good defensive Terra around this can allow you to survive for a big turn, and I find that with Wake, like, because it's timid and not modest, I sometimes struggle to actually pick up one hit knockouts, and that feels really bad. I'll do, like, 90% to something, they survive, and then they, like, retaliate back and then deal with me, and so those are just a couple of things I've struggled against while playing with this team that I wanted to note. All right, we've got a Kyogre team here with Archaladon, Chiyu, Ogre Pond, Tornadus, and Hitmontop. Hitmontop plus Kyogre was like the go-to duo back in VGC 2010, which is 14 years ago. That's kind of wild to think about. It was called Top Ogre, and it was one of the most dominant teams throughout the 2010 format. So, kind of cool to see Hitmontop again here. Of course, one of the main selling points of Hitmontop is that it gets access to Wide Guard. We have Sunny Day on Tornadus. I think like it's probably just going to be Tornadus, the Maridon, the... Walking Wake, and then the Rillaboom. Um, I said Maridon, I mean Coridon. <laughs> I'm so used to Coridon, or sorry, Maridon after uh, seeing it everywhere from it winning Indianapolis Regionals. So the question is what lead I want to go with. Um, 
I honestly don't hate this lead with Rillaboom and Wake in the back. Yeah, I think Golden Go into a matchup when you have him on top alone is bad. It's also not good into Kyogre or Chiyu. And Incineroar is not valuable, really, other than to intimidate the Ogre Pawn. So, I think this makes sense to me. I don't love leading Rillaboom here. There's a lot that like, can actually switch in. And I think, like, if we can conserve Rillaboom towards the late game, it can be immensely valuable into Kyogre. Let's say we force a tear out of my opponent early, then Rillaboom will be amazing. But I think Karaidon here can just put in a lot of work and put on a lot of offensive pressure immediately. It's actually just Tornadus and Kyogre, though. Okay. So, they're going to win the Weather War, but I can get around this by just going for Sunny Day on turn one. And actually, I win the Weather War, meaning that they are Choice Scarf Kyogre. Interesting. This probably has Rain Dance, though. So I wouldn't be shocked to see something like Rain Dance plus Water Spout turn one. To which I'm actually thinking about going just straight for like Protect and Bleak Wind. And then turn two Sunny Day or Tailwind. Okay, so they're going to stay in. Oh, they actually go for Taunt. Okay. That's fine. Mainly curious what Kyogre wants to opt for then. It's going to be Ice Beam into the Coridon. This is a big deal because now you're locked into Ice Beam, right? So I can just go for Fire Terra this next turn. It's great damage from Bleak Wind too. So you can either Tailwind or Rain Dance here, which is the interesting debate. But I'm going to Terra here. I'm going to go for the Flame Charge into Tornadus. And I think I don't mind actually pivoting out into Rillaboom right now. Well, I, I guess I have to uh, consider the fact Ice Beam can go into this slot. Part of me actually wants to just stay in with Tornadus, honestly. Terra, Flame Charge, Torn, and Bleak Wind. Okay, that works. Fire Terra is immensely helpful here. This also gets rid of my weakness to Bleak Wind Storm from the opposing side. And yeah, I think like the weather interaction is such a big deal here, right? Normally, the rain should be set up after the sun, but because they're Choice Scarf, that's not the case. So they are just going to set up a Tailwind here, which means that they cannot control the weather for the subsequent turn. Indeed, it is Ice Beam Insulin Tornado slot, which is fine. Uh, I think the main thing to respect right now is Rock Ogre Palm being able to IV Cudgel the Coridon. But I'll be able to flame charge Tornadus for a knockout. Beautiful. And now we'll get a single target Bleak Windstorm as well. Let's see if it connects. It is going to connect. Wonderful. It's a lot of damage on a Kyogre. Let's see what they switch into. Ogre Palm makes the most sense, but it's actually going to be Hit on top. Okay. I am more than okay with that. We have the clear amulet, which is immensely helpful here. You should just fake out Coridon. Him on top does get access to Faint, which would be a pretty cool move. Uh, I'm happy for them to flinch something and knock out Tornadus here, because like their Tailwind is slowly expiring. Kyogre's in the spot where it really needs to switch out soon, honestly. So I'm actually down to just straight up Flare Blitz Him on top and Bleak Wind Storm. Because right now, Kyogre's actually caught in a really bad spot. So exactly, it has to switch out here. Now, Him on top can only flinch one of my two Pokemon, meaning that I'll just get a knockout with the other one. Chiyu comes out. It's going to be fake out onto Tornadus. Perfect. And Flare Blitz should just obliterate the hit on top here. Cool. So we'll get the knockout onto that. Beautiful. I think it was maybe worthwhile to consider switching Tornadus out and going out into the Rillaboom there, but I figured they might click fake out onto the... Coridon. So now I can bring out Rillaboom safely. They bring Kyogre out. Yep. So Rillaboom obviously can just grassy glide the Kyogre at this point. But Kyogre could Grass Terra. So one thing we want to respect is something like Grass Terra Kyogre plus... Like they have two turns of Tailwind left. Uh, Wake is going to be an excellent late game answer into Chiyu. So in this spot, I actually don't mind going for Collision Course into Kyogre and Fake Out into it. We know it's Choice Carve Kyogre, so you can't really get around this unless you're Ghost Terra for some reason. 
But Ghost Hair would be really bizarre. But the logic here is even if Chiyu gets the knockout onto us, I want to see if Kyogre goes for a Terra, essentially, right? Uh, the only way for this to work out for them is Defensive Terra, Kyogre, and Dark Pulse. But, okay, they're not going to Terra. So you flinch. And they actually Dark Pulse into a Rillaboom. Cool. So Crydon here is just going to get another knockout. Beautiful. Yeah, like, part of the thing with this team is because you have Sunny Day on Tornadus, you can lead Crydon more comfortably, but what made the game even easier for us was that they actually were Choice Scarf Kyogre. And um, so we actually won the Weather War, and we're not supposed to win that Weather War. And so, yep, they're down to their final Pokemon. I think if they had Rock Ogre Pond over Hitmontop, this game would have been a lot scarier. But just double-checking the board state, last turn of Tailwind, so we can safely just protect here. And then go for Grassy Glide, which breaks a potential Sash, although that looks like Specs to you damage to me, given that we're Assault Vest Rillaboom. So they have the opportunity to potentially knock our Crydon out last turn, but then the idea is then I can just Grassy Glide Kyogre, get a KO there, uh, and then the Walking Wake is an excellent closer Pokemon here into both Kyogre and Chiyu. But Crydon was amazing for us in this game, right? I was able to get that knockout onto Tornadus, get that one-hit knockout onto Hitmontop. Like, when you have weather control with this thing, it is just an absolute beast. So Walking Wake comes out. Now we can just go for Collision Course here, and Hydro Steam. And there's no Terra here that allows you to survive both of these. So, probably Ghost Terra if I had to guess. Let's see. Nope, it's just Grass Terra. Okay, makes sense. Could've gone for Draco Meteor there, but I don't really want to risk a miss in this position. Plus, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, as I would think Collision Course should just get the knockout here. Let's see. Yeah. Crydon just put in so much work in this battle. What an absolute beast it was. And with clear amulet, it makes such a big difference, right? My opponent probably brought him on top because they wanted to intimidate the Crydon, but having the clear amulet is so, so big. And it's one of the reasons why physical restricted Pokemon are just strong. Uh, one of the many reasons, of course. But, like, when you think about the physical restricted Pokemon, Groudon, Calyrex, Ice Rider, Crydon, they all really, really like Clear Amulet. It's just such a good item to reduce Intimidate's value, and it suddenly gives you such a winning matchup into Intimidate users, when otherwise you would struggle a lot. So, yeah, like, the fact they weren't able to Intimidate us, the fact that they were Scarf Locked into Ice Beam, um, put my opponent into a really difficult position, as a result, we were able to just secure some knockouts really quickly, but Crydon was amazing for us there. All right, we've got a Calyrex Ice Rider team here. It's basically the standard five. Uh, the last slot, normally you'll see something like Raging Bolt, Golden Go, Ferrigraph, but we've actually got an Arch Haladon here. So this is interesting because the team creator mentioned that in the Ice Rider matchup, you can actually go with Golden Go, Wake, Incident, and Rillaboom, and you actually drop Coridon. Now, that seems a little bit odd, but the problem is that Coridon is just so weak into Pelipper, and also, it's weak into Ice Rider, right? Ice Rider can simply just Glacial Lance us, and if we go for Fire Terra, it can go for High Horsepower onto us. So, instead, the idea is to use a more Golden Go-centric game, and then we also have Water Terra with Incineroar, which can Water Terra and then Willow us into the Calyrex Ice Rider. So, I'm thinking of Insin plus Golden Go with Rilla in the back. One of the nice things here is that you're often going to be Water Terra with the Calyrex Ice Rider, so if you Water Terra, then Rillaboom hits you for super effective damage. Now, because my opponent has our, our Chalodon, I actually think you could make an argument for the Crydon here still. Like, don't get me wrong, Crydon's actually still solid here, right? Uh, the argument for Wake is that it matches up better into the Pelipper. I can Draco Meteor uh, and do a lot of damage, and I can survive a Glacial Lance as well without having to commit my Terra. So, I think the fundamental debate here is Crydon versus Walking Wake. And honestly, I prefer Wake a little bit more here. This also gives us a switch into Surging Strikes quite nicely. So, yeah. This is an example of a game where you can drop a Restricted Pokemon. And I think it's important to highlight matches like this because we're in a format where Restricted Pokemon are just so good, but sometimes your Restricted Pokemon can be a liability when your opponent has a lot of things that give it trouble. And in this case, Pelipper alone already is kind of tough for Crydon, but it's going to be Amoongus and Calyrex, which is the dream lead scenario for us, because we're able to just fake out into Calyrex Ice Rider turn one and go for a nasty plot. So, I think that's exactly what I'm going to go for. Their play, in my opinion, should be protect Calyrex, pivot Amoongus out into Pelipper or Urshifu. So, we'll see if they make that. But for now, I'm content going for Fake Out and Nasty Plot. 
I'm actually really wondering if I need to do... Like, it's such an obvious play. Part of me is thinking about actually going for, like, Will-O-Wisp immediately onto Amoongus here. Um... Because I think Amoongus honestly should just switch out here. And if we nail Urshifu on the switch in, it's huge. Like, I, I can't see my opponent just letting me... Like, Fake Up plus Nasty Plot is relatively free. I'm just worried about Urshifu Pelipper as the last two. Uh, okay, for now, I'm willing to make the safe play. Okay, Amoongus stays in. That's good. I don't know what's really going to want to go for here. Oh, just a Protect? Cool. Free Nasty Plot. So you can see, imagine if I brought Coridon out here, right? It would look good on turn one, but then all they have to do is switch into Pelipper, and then suddenly you've got Pelipper out against Incineroar plus Coridon, and that's really ugly. So we get Nasty Plot immediately, which is amazing. And part of what makes this combo so good is that it's so anti Calyrex Amoongus. So now I can actually just go for Will O Wisp onto the Calyrex slot. Uh, I could go for another Nasty Plot. I don't mind greeting another Nasty Plot here, honestly. It just gets a little bit interesting if they have Pelipper plus Urshifu in the back. But then we have Rillaboom and Wake, both which are really good. It's just like, I can get a lot of guaranteed free damage with Make It Rain right now, so I'm thinking I should just take the free damage. Um, yeah, okay. You know what? I'd rather just go for Make It Rain. Force a Terra, force a Switch. Amoongus pivots out. Yep. Into Pelipper. Makes sense. This is exactly why Crydon was a little bit scary to bring in the first place. And they're going to Terra. Cool. So look at how many resources they had to commit just to get to this game state, right? They revealed an extra Pokemon. They commit their Terra here immediately. And it's actually Grass Terra, which is better than Water Terra here for us. Although I guess with Water Terra, Rillaboom would have been pretty good. But I'm happy to see this. So, we're going to make it rain. It's going to do sizable damage. Oh my gosh. That was more than sizable. <laughs> and Willowis connects. Oh, thankfully. Nice. Beautiful. And we're in such a commanding spot right now, right? Like, my opponent has revealed an extra Pokemon. I haven't even taken damage yet. They do get Trick Room up, but an Ice Rider under Trick Room is a lot less scary. Beautiful. I'm honestly curious how fast their Pelipper is, because I think... Insin might just be faster, to which then I could just go for knockoff onto the Pelipper and Shadow Ball onto Calyrex. Okay, they high horsepower us. Yep. We take less than half, and we are faster. Beautiful. So, this game highlights how strong the Incineroar plus Golden Go combination is into these Calyrex Ice Rider teams, right? And this is why people are running Will O Wisp safety goggles on Incineroar. It makes Amoongus so, so sad. So, if you look at the game, right, like, my opponent committed their Terra, they've given up two Pokemon, they have an Amoongus in the back, which is completely useless into the core of Golden Go, Incineroar, and Rillaboom. And now the question is, what is your final Pokemon? So, Golden Go, super, super nice into these teams, and the Willow Swan Incineroar makes a huge difference as well. It's like, Willow's plus safety goggles makes it that much tougher, right? Uh, if we don't have goggles, then Amoongus can pressure us with the Spore, which is already kind of scary, and Incense their last one, which is totally fine. Yep. They pivot into Amoongus, cool. Uh, I could Terra Golden Go here. At this point, Coridon actually as the last one would have worked out fine here, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Uh, I'm down to just parting shot into the Incineroar slot and protect with Golden Go. But at this point, uh, we should just win the game with Walking Wake plus the Rillaboom. And Golden Go here can just Terra next turn to get around Flare Blitz slash knockoff from Incin. Okay, they try to pollen puff us. Yep, that's fine. I'm actually faster than their Incineroar under Trick Room as well, so even though they set up Trick Room, I've gotten so much value out of it, being able to knock out Pelipper before it could move and parting shot into Incineroar. This is one of the upsides of running a slower Incineroar. So, I am happy to pivot into the Rillaboom here, and this just gives me Fake Out next turn. I can just Fake Out Nasty Plot again, and then Protect again. Yeah. Cool. And they go for knockoff into protect. Beautiful. Yeah, the main thing here is like we have leftovers and grassy terrain now, and Trick Room is slowly expiring, and I have double fake out pressure and a walking wake in the back. So, uh, and Sinor and Moongus are going to really struggle to pull this one out. Two turns of Trick Room left. So, like I said, we can just fake out into Incineroar and Nasty Plot here. Yeah, and then they forfeit. 
So the... I mean, this game was over, but basically fake out Incineroar, nasty plot, protect high horsepower into Incineroar, then high horsepower, like, Fairy Terra make it rain, for example. Um, but we just built such an early lead, and this game highlights why you can consider actually dropping your restricted Pokemon. Karina would have ended up working out fine as the final one, but um, I think, yeah, double fake out pressure is really valuable in this matchup. It just makes Calyrex Ice Rider struggle that much more. And then it's a question of whether or not you want Wake or Karidon. You really could bring both, but in this case, I think, like, Wake just makes a lot of sense because it can survive, like, a Hurricane, and then it can retaliate back with, like, a Draco Meteor, for example. And a single Draco Meteor, I think, makes a huge difference in this matchup as well. So that's why I ended up opting for Wake. All right, we've got an opposing Crydon team here. Torn, Flutter, Crydon, Chi, Amoongus, and Bolt. I'm inclined to just want to lead with Torn plus Crydon here myself, with Wake in the back. I think Torn Wake actually works as well if we think they're going to go Crydon. Because this gives me a speed boost immediately. But the idea of leading Torn plus Crydon is to just start boosting our speed immediately. And then for the last one, I think I'm mainly worried about the Raging Bolt. So to deal with that, I like Rillaboom or Golden Go. I like Rillaboom a little bit more here. We can actually fire Terror up potentially defensively as well. So a lot of options. Um, yeah, I think Incin feels really bad here because they don't have any physical attackers. And then Golden Go is just so weak into Chiyu, Crydon, and Flutter Main. You could make an argument for Golden Go if you think, like, the combination of Tornadus, Amoongus, and Bolt are going to be out on the field. But if I were my opponent, I would definitely go with Torn, Flutter, Crydon. Those three, I think, without a doubt. I probably wouldn't bring Amoongus into a matchup with Rillaboom, Crydon, and Golden Go, so I would drop that. And then I think Bolt is actually really strong as a fourth. Then the question is, what do you lead with? I would hope to see, like, a Tornadus, Bolt, Tornadus, Flutter lead, but if they go Torn, Crydon, I think this gets interesting really quickly. Um... Yeah, because then it's like we have to deal with potential speed ties, and that's a little bit spooky. And then another thing to think about is like, let's say we both Tailwind, we both get a speed boost, and then they bring out Fluttermain. That can also get spooky. But they go Torn Fluttermain, which is a really good lead for us, in my opinion. Because that Fluttermain slot, once I Terra with Crydon, is just not going to be able to pressure me very much. Oh, it's Special Attack Flutter. Okay, most of the times it's speed. So that is interesting. I uh, one of the things I often like doing here, by the way, is like staggering tailwind. So for example, like protect turn one, Terra, Flame Charge into Torn. And then on turn two. I don't even know if I needed to protect here, but I was worried about bleak wind, like dazzling gleam slash icy wind. The logic behind this is in a matchup where we have a lot of similar Pokemon, it's really valuable to conserve your speed advantage. So I want to set up Tailwind after my opponent, and if I can set it up two turns after my opponent, that makes a huge difference. So Torn's going to protect. Oh, it's not Specs Flutter either. What is the item on that? Special attack, but not spe- huh. And you can see here, their Tornadus looks like it is clicking Bleak Wind Storm. Cool. We get Flame Charge. So they're trying to kind of do a similar concept here of Staggering Tailwind. Oh, it's actually Icy Wind! That's even better for us because we're clear Amulet Coridon. Oh, that could not have played out any better. This is actually going to be really rough for my opponent because now you have no way around me clicking Tailwind. And now that I have a speed boost on Coridon, I'm just guaranteed to be faster than Flutter. Yeah. Although I guess you were Special Attack Booster Flutter instead of Speed Booster Flutter anyway. But... Tailwind now, and Flame Charge into Flutter is really safe. Yeah. You really don't have a way around this. Okay, they stay in. Beautiful. I suspect this might be Focus Sash Flutter then, actually. But we trade Tailwinds here, which I'm totally okay with since I already have the speed advantage. And, like, getting these Flame Chargers off is such a big deal. So here we go. Are you focus sashed? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was like, if you're a special attack booster and you have protect, you have got to be sashed. But we get another speed boost, and then just as in green. Cool. That works for me. So, we both have three turns of Tailwind here. I don't 
don't mind pivoting into Rillaboom. It seems decently safe. Like, and getting Grassy Train for Crydon Recovery is not bad. Uh, Raging Bolt is the main thing to watch out for, right? So I think I'm happy pivoting into Rillaboom here. And... I'm gonna Flame... I, mean, I think Collision Charge actually gets the KO. So this covers for this switching out. Yeah. It should get the knockout here. And I think being able to get Bolt if it switches in is a huge deal because you're dealing over 50%. And I think if we get that much free damage on Bolt, it's really hard for my opponent to come back because Rillaboom then can just glide into the Flutter main slot. I think here they probably just, you know, attack with both Mons, which is fine. Okay, yeah, they just stay in with both. That's totally okay. So here's Collision Chorus, Onslaught Tornadus. Oh, <gasps> it does hang on! Oh, wow. Okay, that's impressive bulk. But to be honest, I actually don't even mind that, uh, since they ended up clicking Icy Wind instead of Bleak Wind Storm. Bleak Wind there could have been pretty spooky, for sure. Um, but the reason why I don't mind that is because now you're just stuck on the field with Tornadus, right? And, like, Icy Wind isn't even helping my opponent, really. I can now go for Grassy Glide onto the Tornadus. Two turns of Tailwind left. And then, I'm actually down to Flare Blitz into Flutter Main, since I could see it switching out now. Whereas, yeah, I mean, Bleak Wind there would have been really scary. I would have lost a lot more HP on both Pokemon. I just, I thought Collision Course would definitely get that knockout. So, impressive bulk there on Torn. Flutter Protects, which is more than okay. We'll get the knockout onto Tornadus here. Cool. And what's also a really big deal right now is I still have Tornadus out for another Tailwind. So, this last one was an example of, like, me thinking, well, it's really safe to go for this because it essentially covers for any switch out option, but I was doing that with the assumption I would definitely get the knockout. The fact that there was even a chance Tornadus could survive there means that I should just be clicking Flame Charge or Flare Blitz instead. Uh, because, yeah, a Bleak Wind Storm coming out there would have been really ugly. Uh, I would expect to survive, given that they're so bulky, like, I, maybe they don't have as much special attack investment. Um... But it's still spooky, right? They actually bring out Chiyu. Okay. Chiyu is fine. Uh, the main thing here is this could obviously Terra. I could just glide to finish off Flutter main, but I think Flutter should probably switch into Coridon right now on their end, to which Walking Wake kind of demolishes. I honestly don't mind. I think Grassy Glide and Flare Blitz right now into Chiyu. This covers for Ghost Terra on Chiyu. And they're going to Terra. Beautiful. And don't forget, like, Walking Wake just ends this game against Coridon in this end game. So, I think we should just knock out Chiyu here. Beautiful. It's Ghost Terra. So, like, the idea is, like, Grassy Glide Flare Blitz covers for everything Chiyu could want to do right now. The only thing is if Chiyu protects, uh, which is maybe a slight possibility, but Coridon just gets to push the delete button right now, which is so nice. And that's another knockout. Beautiful. This is also why I wanted Rillaboom, by the way. It makes Fluttermane so sad. And having Rillaboom offer pressure with priority with Grassy Glide and having Fake Out is really nice. So yeah, I think the one turn I could have played this game better is when I went for Collision Course because I wanted to cover for the potential switch into Raging Bolt and they didn't even end up having Raging Bolt here. Uh, that turn could have just been a Flare Blitz into that slot. Because like Flare Blitz and Sun still would do a decent amount to Raging Bolt as it switches in. Uh, but in the end, I think, yeah, we had a really favorable lead matchup here, and Coridon was able to just dish out so much damage. So, Coridon comes back out, but at this point, their Terra was already committed. Yeah, like, the main thing there was to just not get tripped up by a potential Ghost Terra. Okay. There's still two turns of terrain, so it's pretty safe to just Grassy Glide Flutter here. Flutter probably protects, but I'm fine just going for Glide and Collision Course. Then I'll bring out Tornadus, I'll click Grassy Glide again, and then Tailwind. They do have a, like, very small chance of winning this, I think. Uh, if you get Double Protect off with Flutter. Let's see, it starts with, you get Double Protect right now. Oh, they don't even Protect, okay. So, Glide just knocks out Flutter, nice. Yeah, to me, in the Coridon versus Coridon War, I think it's really important to just get Coridon out immediately and start clicking Flame Charge. So, I would have been curious to see how this would have played out if my opponent just let T Tornadus Coridon and we just had the Mirror immediately. The collision Course does so much damage there. Yeah, so they Collision Course in return, but in the end, our Coridon picked up, like, almost every knockout in this game, right? So, beautiful. And then now we can just bring out Tornadus. Click Tailwind. 
And ideally, we want to win the game without having to click an inaccurate move. So that would rely on ending the game with Flamethrower or Hydro Steam instead of Draco Meteor. With Terrain up, we can just go for Wood Hammer here, which can never miss. Tailwind. Well, I shouldn't say never miss. Theoretically, you could miss if you like lower accuracy or had Bright Powder or something. But what I should say is it's 100% accurate here. So, yep, just set up Tailwind, go for 100% accurate moves. Oh, they're actually still faster. Oh, because of the Icy Wind speed drops. So, Glide actually would have been better in that position. But, it's fine. We tail in here to make sure that the Walking Wake in the back will just be able to get a move off. Cool. Okay. Now we bring out Wake. Grass does disappear. Sun is still up. So, Walking Weight comes out. There's Protosynthesis, which gives us a very nice speed boost. So, we are faster than you. You're a plus one, but I have the speed boost and Tailwind is up. So, we can just Wood Hammer again here. And go for the... Hydro Seam has the same type attack bonus here. Flamethrower has Sun being up. I feel like either probably gets the KO here. I'm actually curious. Yeah, I can't see Karate on surviving this with Life Orb. Yeah, I was like, there's no way. Cool. And in that position, like, even if Karate somehow survived, if you knock out Rillaboom, uh, I guess you could Flame Charge again, but then, like, you're at plus two speed and I still have Tailwind up. And Karate normally doesn't even ha uh, run a Dragon type attack, right? And so, yeah, it's like, even if you knocked out the Wake in return, I just would hammer you. What is he? Okay. Mewtwo, Sableye, Urshifu, Indidi, Ursaluna, Cresselia. Okay. We have Mewtwo, folks. Mewtwo is out on the field. Uh, This is a really cool team. I'm very scared. Huh. So what are possible leads? Sableye, Mewtwo, Indidi, Mewtwo. Indidi, Cresselia, if you want to hard go for Trick Room. Ursh Crash, Ursh, Mewtwo. I mean, there's so many combinations. Uh, like, I want Rilla and Insin. So I probably don't want Torn. I also kind of want Golden Go, right? Because it resists Expanding Force. I might try to go with something like a Coridon Golden Go lead with Insin and Rilla in the back. Alternatively, I think leading Insin with Coridon is also maybe okay. The reason I like leading Golden Go is because they have a lot of passive things, right? Indidi, Sableye, Cresselia. If you lead any of those, or especially a combination of those, I can just start nasty plotting immediately. So, I, I just, I'm excited to see Mewtwo. I'm rooting for my opponent, honestly. I hope they win. <laughs> like, I'm still going to play my best, but I want Mewtwo to win here. Because I do not really know what it has to offer in this format. And I want to sh be shown its power. Uh, it's just Cresselia and Ursaluna. Okay. Hmm. This is really interesting. I mean, Ursaluna normally gonna want to run Ghost Terra. <laughs> I want to go for like Flare Blitz into this and Shadow Ball into it so badly, expecting Ghost Terra, and they go like Helping Hand Earthquake Turn One or something. Uh. Yeah, that's probably a little too crazy though. I think. I'm also thinking Flare Blitz Crest and Shadow Ball it here. I don't know if I want to Terra because then I'm weak to Earthquake. Okay, I'm going to go for regular Flare Blitz and Shadow Ball here. They Terra. If it's Ursa Luna tearing into Ghost, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it could have been a... Oh, it could have been Flare Blitz Shadow Ball. Okay, that makes me feel better. Thank you. <laughs> water Terra, though. Like, I actually haven't seen Water Terra on Ursa Luna in a minute. Okay, no Protect from Crest, which is what I was worried about. Oh my gosh. That almost just got a one-hit KO. I mean, obviously we got a crit there. Uh, Shadow Ball would have finished it off anyway without the crit, I'm pretty sure, but... It's not every day you see Cresselia just take so much damage immediately. And they just Earthquake, yeah. Nice, we survived with both pre-guts. Okay. 
I was worried about helping hand there turn one or protect. Both would have been really bad. I mean, this is still pretty scary because my last two Pokemon are Incineroar and Rillaboom, right? So Ursaluna is looking very powerful right now. Maybe Mewtwo comes in now? No, that's Indeedee. Huh. Um, pretty easy to protect Earthquake here or protect Trick Room. Mewtwo should be their last one. I lean towards doubling up onto this, honestly. I also think Protect Switch and Arillaboom is maybe acceptable here. Okay, I'm just gonna go for Flare Blitz, make it rain. It's Choice Scarf NDD. Did they facade here? I mean, what is going on? What? Curse? <laughs> I'm so lost. That's so cool. Uh, okay. Wow. Huh. Uh, Curse is really scary because it means you can actually survive. Uh, well, you're scarf locked right now. I know that, so I can wood hammer you. You can wood hammer nasty plot. Is there any chance this thing survives wood hammer after curse? Honestly, probably. Right? I don't know. I'll double up onto it. I mean, Entity should switch here, no? Into Mewtwo. Yeah. Let's see if Ursaluna protects. Nice. It doesn't. I think this should get the knockout. The double up. And if it doesn't, I've lost all faith in Rillaboom. Okay, faith restored. I guess it wasn't restored if it was always there. Sorry, Rillaboom. I didn't mean to doubt you. What a crazy team, though. Oh my gosh. I did not think I'd ever see Karidon fainting to Choice Scarf Dazzling Gleam from Indity, but here we are. That's so sick. Yeah, but we know it's Scarf Indity, right? So it's like, at this point, you spam Expanding Force. Uh, I could obviously just switch into Incin right now to win the Terrain War. Which I don't mind. Yeah, like switch an instant here and then protect with Golden Go. What a crazy team, though. Curse Ursaluna with Water Terra, Choice Scarf Indy and Mewtwo. I love that. I'm mainly curious now what Mewtwo has to offer, right? Like, that was the Pokemon I had big question marks about. But Incineroar is generally a really nice switch in. But Mewtwo does get some attacks that can hit Incineroar for uh, super effective damage. This next turn, by the way, if Incin survives a turn, I just switch the Golden Go out into Rillaboom, fake out Mewtwo, and then Grassy Glide to knock out Indy the next turn. Although maybe there's a chance Grassy Glide doesn't KO. Okay, it's just Dark Pulse. Cool. Yeah, poor Mewtwo. Uh, and Indy being Scarf locked in a Dazzling Gleam is not really concerning here. So we'll go for Fake Out onto you, pivot out into Rillaboom here. And I can Fake Out, of course, because I'm bringing Rillaboom in to change the terrain. I guess if this were like Covert Cloak, that would be funny. Okay, there's Fake Out. Dazzling Gleam comes out for minimal damage, and they flinch. Perfect. Sunlight fades. Not really relevant here. 
Uh, we can actually just go for a wood hammer and knock off onto Indity to guarantee a knockout this turn. Dazzling Gleam is irrelevant, but Mewtwo here can only knock out one of two Pokemon. And I don't, like, there is a world in which Mewtwo protects here and Indity just keeps firing off Dazzling Gleam, so I'd rather just take a guaranteed knockout here and let it be a 2v1 against Mewtwo. And they actually have Earth Power here. It does get the knockout onto Incineroar, that's cool. Okay. Their life orb, yep. Put one hammer here. And that knocks out any D. Cool, so we've seen Dark Pulse, Wood Hammer, presumably expanding force and protect. So I don't think Rillaboom is really at too much risk of getting knocked out by this Mewtwo. So I'll bring out Golden Go here. And I think Shadow Ball plus Wood Hammer here, either move gets the knockout. There's still three turns of terrain as well, meaning that even if you protect one turn. I think I should probably just Terra Golden Go, because they're I was yeah, I would guess Earth Power or Dark Pulse it. So Terra here, Shadow Ball, and Wood Hammer. Yeah, unfortunately for them, I think like Scarf Indity is just I mean it, it was actually huge for my opponent because it gave them that knockout out of Crydon, but it doesn't really do too much in the end game. I'm actually surprised they locked into Dazzling, but I guess you just kinda want free damage, right? Okay, me too protects, that's fine. Means I get more grassy train recovery with Golden Go. And Rillaboom. Uh, the Protect actually does make things slightly more interesting, I would say. Um, since you're stalling out a turn of grassy train immediately right now. But yeah, I just don't think Mewtwo is bulky enough to take these attacks. Like, you're going to eat up Life Orb damage and then either a Wood Hammer or a Shadow Ball. The main question here is actually whether or not I want to consider protecting Golden Go. Two turns of terrain. Because I don't think Mewtwo is one-shotting Rillaboom anyway, but the way to throw this game is if the... Golden Go protects, and then they actually do knock out Rillaboom. So in this spot, I think it's better to just Shadow Ball and Wood Hammer, personally. There's Expanding Force. Yep, exactly. They target Rillaboom. I don't think this KOs. Yeah. But, like, one way I could have thrown this game is if I protected and they get a critical hit there, right? So, Golden Go gets Shadow Ball off. And that's just a knockout. This is the fundamental problem with Mewtwo. It's just kind of frail, and it struggles to pick up big one-hit knockouts a lot of the times. But Earth Power was cool. I could have potentially considered tearing Incineroar that turn. Uh, I wasn't sure what, like, the filler move on Mewtwo would be. Because normally you want to run, like, Expanding Force. I mean, both Earth Power and Dark Pulse, actually. I wasn't sure uh, whether or not Mewtwo would be carrying those moves. But that was really cool. All right. We've got Terrapagos, Urshifu, Amoongus, Flutter, Torn, Chi, Yu. This is the sixth lap finish second at the Indianapolis Regional Championships. It's what a lot of the Terrapagos teams look like right now. So against Terrapagos, like, having Fake Out is really valuable, because it's normally going to be Choice Specs, and so you're able to just Fake it out. Incineroar has Goggles here, which is interesting, because it gives me a decent matchup into the Amoongus, but otherwise it doesn't feel that great. Hmm... We have to be careful about going for Terra, because once we Terra with this, Terrapagos becomes pretty powerful. Crydon can just Collision Course Terrapagos, though, which I think is really, really strong in this matchup. Uh, I'm thinking probably Walking Wake, Rilla, Tornadus, and Crydon. And then for lead, I think Tornadus Rilla is not bad here with Wake and Crydon. I think Golden Go is not bad. The main reason I don't want to bring Golden Go is specifically because of Chi Yu. If they didn't have Chi Yu, I think Golden Go becomes infinitely stronger. It also gives me an Amoongus answer. But with this, I get to bring my two most powerful Pokemon in Crydon, plus the Walking Wake. Rillaboom gives me Fake Out Pressure into the Terrapagos, which is really good. And having the Assault Vest user is also good here. It's going to be Torn Chi Yu. Okay. This is interesting. I actually theoretically could Terra Rillaboom right now into fire. Uh, one of the questions is whether or not Chiyu goes for, like, Ghost Terra. This is often Covert Cloak, which is kind of spooky. The other question is whether or not you have Taunt, because if you don't have Taunt, I could stagger Tailwind by a turn. I 
need to Terra Crydon, honestly. I mean, it's mainly against the Flutter main that it's helpful against, I suppose. But I actually think Fire Terra on Rillaboom is really powerful here. So I'm thinking of going for Protect here, Fire Terra, and just High Horsepower into Chiyu. Yeah, they do go for Terra. That should be Terra Ghost on Chiyu. That's great. That means your Terrapagos can't Terra now, right? And this next turn now, I can just thread in Grassy Glide plus Bleak Wind Storm. Cool. That works for me. I'm mainly curious about their Tornado set. I think you'd want to just set up Tailwind on turn one here, which I'm okay with. And part of the logic here is I think, like, Fire Terra Rillaboom is just really good into their team, right? If it's Chiyu, Tornadus, Flutter main, like, none of those can really do too much damage to me. Terrapagos should be their final one. But now Terrapagos also has to hit for single target, and we can just Collision Course it. Oh, they actually just Bleak Wind Storm. Yeah, so they Bleak Wind Heat Wave here, which makes a lot of sense, but now I get a pretty big edge. Rill actually takes a decent amount from that, so it's probably just Max Special Attack Torn. Obviously, they're dropping our special defense here, but Heat Wave comes out. Cool, we take that quite nicely. High Horsepower comes out. Grassy Glide should finish that off now. Uh, I think I'm going to Bleak Win here to take advantage of their special defense drop if they protect here and then just glide into Chiyu. We really want to... Okay, they don't end up protecting here. Ooh, Chiyu survives. That's fine. Uh, turns out... Yeah, they're not going to Tailwind here. <laughs> the Bleak Wind actually brings Tornadus down the Sash. So they're also clicking Bleak Wind here. But now with the Beads of Rune turned off, I think that... You shouldn't KO Rillaboom. Let's see. Beautiful. Okay. It's interesting because we both had Tornadus on the field and neither of us have clicked Tailwind yet, but I think they have to Tailwind this turn. I guess you could bring out the Terrapagos and Protect, but it's going to be Flutter, yeah. Flutter is interesting here. Uh, if you end up Tailwinding with this, then I can just Grassy Glide Flutter Bleak Wind here, I think. Yeah, I'm down for that. Cool. Because Flutter can't pick up a double knockout right now. So I didn't set up Tailwind because like they're going to be faster than me right now anyway. Yeah, Glide is a 2-hit KO. And they just offer Icy Wind. I actually don't think that knocks out either Pokemon. <laughs> nice. Okay. Speed drops on both. Bleak Wind double connects. Oh, it's a shame we didn't actually knock out Flutter Main, though. I could have gone for Woodhammer instead. Despite us being up 2-4, like, my opponent could definitely still win this, uh, since Flutter is going to be the fastest Pokemon from their end. And Terrapagos can just kind of dunk on things. Yep, so there's Terrapagos. Uh, the main question here is whether or not we think Flutter is going to protect, because I think it's fine to actually go for... Do I want to protect with Torn or do I want to just sacrifice it? Because I could stagger Tailwind, right? Three turns on their end. Yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. I'm thinking I protect here and then switch Rillaboom out and sacrifice Walking Wake since Coridon wins this endgame for us. The logic here is that I think Fluttermane should protect because you got to be worried about Grassy Glide. So ideally, we see Flutter protect. And then they knock out the wake for a free switch and back into Rillaboom. Okay, perfect. So let's see if it's Terra Star Storm. Yep, beautiful. It's exactly what we want to see. Ooh, I did not want to survive that. That's okay. Because uh, they only have two turns of Tailwind left, so they'll have only one turn left after this turn. So now I can just Tailwind safely and protect with wake. And then bring out Rillaboom. Yeah. And I'll just have enough extra turns of Tailwind to win this endgame now, which is the key thing. But if uh, Wake had gone down there, which is what I was hoping for, I just get a free switch in back into Rillaboom. And then with Rillaboom out, I can just Grassy Glide knock out Flutter. So you have to go for a double protect. But 
I think Coridon is a really nice Pokemon to close out this game with. One other approach I could have had in this game was having Coridon out earlier, because Coridon against Flutter Chi you actually would have been decent, especially with Flame Charge, and then we just outpace our opponent from there. Okay. Terrain disappears, which is perfect. So now I'll bring Rillaboom out. And from this position, I'm okay to just click Grassy Glide onto Flutter Main because, like, I know that your Tailwind is about to expire, right? So even if you protect, it's still fine. We don't want to get overconfident here. You have one turn of Tailwind and I have three, so we've staggered it by two turns, which is critical here. So Grassy Glide. And I'm down to just Hydro Steam here to break the shell. Yep, and they don't protect. Perfect. So with this, we have a guaranteed end game with Coridon coming out and just clicking Collision Course to knock out the Trapagos. There's Hydro Steam. Breaks the Terra Shell. And it's spooky because, like, Terrapagos really can do so much damage across the board uh, in this matchup. But they didn't Terra. Uh, our Fire Terra early with the Rillaboom put us into a pretty good spot. Uh, and yeah, this is just the perfect setup for Crydon in this endgame. I think the main thing that I was a little bit worried about is that Fluttermane can actually be pretty annoying because it does just outpace my entire team and I committed my Terra to Rillaboom early on. So it meant that Crydon did have to worry about a fairy type attack just KOing it, right? Uh, Flutter actually has a really good matchup into both Wake as well as the Crydon, but Crydon's the perfect final option for us here. So Pokemon choice-wise, I'm pretty happy with how I... Like, the Pokemon that I selected, I do think Crydon lead actually would have worked out really nicely into what my opponent brought. Because um, if we get a Flame Charge off with it, and we set up Tailwind, it just outpaces my opponent's entire team, and should be able to just crush them. So, yeah, we can just Collision Course now. Okay, unfortunately, we'll not see the super effective, super strong Collision Course into Terrapagos, but, uh, yeah. This was a game of us kind of utilizing... Assault Vest Rillaboom effectively, uh, and just taking so many special attacks throughout the course of the game. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Calyrex, Ice Rider, Smeargle, Indeedy, uh, Urshifu, Grimmsnarl, and Annihilate. Okay. Well, I said for Ice Rider, you can go with these four and drop Coridon. I might still go with that, honestly. I mean, Smeargle's definitely got to have some weird decorate stuff going on here. Golden Go, I think, is by far the most important Pokemon. Uh, there's a world in which I, like, actually lead Coridon here. I mean, Incineroar is still valuable to burn Calyrex, but I could see them leading with the Nihilate to final Gambit immediately. But then it would be something like a Nihilate in DD, right? Uh... What if I actually led Coridon? And drop Wake. Force a final gambit into this slot. So then I have switch-ins into Incident Rillaboom. Alright, I'm down to try this out. Because I do think Coridon exerts a lot of offensive pressure, and if that's Urshifu Water on their side of the field, being able to set up the sun is also pretty nice to reduce its damage output. So let's see. Smeargle, and Calyrex. Okay. I would guess they just follow me in Trick Room, but that's not really good for me here. You also could follow me Glacial Lance. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I was a little bit more scared of leading Fake Out here. Especially because I guess Smeargle would actually have the faster fake out anyway, right? Ideally, we force them to Terra turn one. They go for follow me. Oh, you know what the problem is? Wide guard on this is a huge issue. So I might actually just go for damage immediately. Make it rain. And collision course. I guess I'm down a Flare Blitz, the Ice Rider here. Smart play. Uh, are they sporing me? Probably spore into Crydon, right? Ah, that was really well done. Nice play. 
Now they can wide guard this next turn in Trick Room, which is really bad. I was hoping to like force out a Terra immediately there from Ice Rider. I'm gonna get a speed boost, attack drop, okay. I'm curious if you just wide guard now. I'm gonna Nasty Plot and then switch into Incineroar. I don't hate the Crydon lead here, but maybe I should have just. I mean, if I let Incin, what or Rillo, how different would things be, right? Because they could just fake out us. Okay, they're gonna Terra now. Terra Water, Waf. Well, you don't even need to follow me, I guess. You could just spore. It's Terra Grass, okay. Which makes sense, but Crydon's asleep right now, which isn't great, and I haven't burnt any sleep turns with it either. Ooh, they're just gonna decorate. That's cool. Uh, that's really bad. I think I just get high horsepowered now. Okay, Trick Room at least this turn. Decorate's still a huge issue, no? Mm. Oh, breaking- like, this getting boosted now makes this so hard for me, I think. They could also just switch an entity to block Fake Out right now. I feel like my only shot is Protect, Terra, Will-O-Wisp. No, but they stay in. That's already bad. Yeah, I should have just tried to knock out Smeargle on turn one. Like, if we trade Smeargle for Crydon falling asleep, then it's worth it. But the trade I took was not worth it in the slightest. I think I just have no experience really fighting against Smeargle Ice Rider. But, like, this strat is what you should expect to see. And now that I've committed my Terra, it just makes it so much easier to fight against. Plus, with Grass Terra, like, I, I just... I mean, I can at least cycle Fake Out, I guess, but you can decorate here again, which is crazy. Okay, they go for Spore, at least. But the problem is now you just go for Follow Me High Horsepower, right? So I guess my response would be switch into Rillaboom here. Knock off. Yeah, Smeargle is just a much better partner than Amoongus here. So while I had beaten the Amoongus version of this... I mean, the Amoongus team also is very different. That's like the standard Ice Rider team. This Ice Rider team is fairly unorthodox. Yeah, the follow me comes out. Okay, at least it's high horsepower, so that gives us a chance. The problem is having, like, blown the surprise of Terra so early on. Now you can also just switch into Indity to set up terrain. Yeah, I just regret that turn one a lot. Could have knocked out Smeargle immediately. I think I tunnel vision a little bit too hard on them clicking fake out with Smeargle on turn one. Yep, there's some DD. Okay. Two turns of Trick Room. You can follow me Glacial Lance now. I guess I'm gonna switch out into gold and go here. Knock off. If Karinon had taken one turn of sleep, this feels like it's doable, but without having eaten any turns of sleep, I'm not really sure how I get out of this. That's the problem. It's also the fact that they gotta decorate up, right? <laughs> that alone is really bad. Yep, glacial lands. Look how much this does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good damage from knockoff at least. It's mentor, okay. Makes sense because their team wants to really prioritize setting up trick room. Hmm. This is actually a big turn. Do you go for follow me? 
Because I'm actually thinking, I, I mean, I protect here. I kind of want to just protect Will-O-Wisp. The alternative is switch in Rilla. But I think I'd rather just sack in in here. The thing is, they could have just high horsepower here, meaning that I could nasty plot with Golden Go. Which maybe was a game-winning play. We're faster, but we miss! Ugh! Well, it's because they went for double trick room. That was a really cool play, but if we didn't miss... Oh. I actually got to show off double trick room recently in a video, but now it is me getting double trick roomed. Oh, that is a shame we missed the Will-O-Wisp, though. Oh, I feel so sad. Uh, how do we win now? You just help a hand glacial land, and everything goes bye bye. Uh, I think it's doomed. Yeah, it's doomed. I I don't think I legitimately have any counterplay to helping hand glacial lands. <laughs> I can't. I can't with this move. Oh, I can't. Uh, even if we had hit the will o though, they would have been able to at least get the double trick room up again, which was really cool. Uh, the main problem in this game is actually Smeargle. Smear like, Amoongus is what you normally see in that slot, and Smeargle was just so effective for my opponent. Uh, I don't mind losing this game. I thought my opponent played spectacularly. Like, the turn one protect, getting that spore off, getting the decorate off, finding that double trick room play as well. Uh, it was just masterfully done, so. I wonder how this game would have played out if I at least got the knockout on a Smeargle on turn one. Mm, cause they don't get trick room up. But then you probably bring out Indy and then I still have a sleeping Crydon. Crydon's just kind of useless, so maybe I do need to just lead Rilla or Ensign so that I don't get spored. But yeah, this was definitely a lot harder than the other Calyrex Ice Rider team that we had gone up against, and that was such a cool team. Yeah, I mean, with three turns of Trick Room, I guess I'll, like, I can fake out here and then hope for a double protect. Actually, it doesn't even matter. Because even if I get a double protect, you just follow me, Glacial Lance, anyway. Yeah. Also, I just fainted Dazzling Glee, maybe. <laughs> okay. I gave Indity a little bit too much credit there. I mean, th this is, that is a very uh, super effective move, you know? But... Yeah, there's there's no way to win this. Because, like, the initial win con, I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, get a triple protect off of Crydon. But then you just Glacial Lance, knock out Rillaboom, and then follow me, Glacial Lance. So... Nice execution by my opponent. We have a lot of tools against Ice Rider teams, um, but the Smeargle Ice Rider lead in particular was really strong. You can do some fun things. Like, I've seen a lot of, like, fun strategies built around Ice Rider as well, and this was certainly a fun one. So, kudos to my opponent. This is a crazy team. Um, speaking of Maridon, like, people are now thinking about Lightning Rod users, and so there is a Rhyperior on my opponent's team. Of course, Maridon usage is ticking upwards after it won the first major tournament of this format, but... Ogre Pawn, Annihilate, Tornadus, Ferrigraph, and Zacian. Interesting. There's a pretty clear Trick Room mode here where you go Annihilate, Ferrigraph, Rhyperior, and then you just like Final Gambit. Uh, Ferrigraph means Instant and Rillaboom become a little bit less effective. It's probably Clear Amulet on Rhyperior. Wow, this is just such a weird matchup. I don't really know how to approach it. Hmm, I'm thinking Tornadus Golden Go here. Crydon in the back, which has a pretty good matchup in Azacian. I mean, Wake's damage is pretty sick here. It's a, it's weird that I'm still thinking about Assault Vest Rillaboom. It's it's mainly for the right here here. I do think I need some Rhyperior answers. I'm actually going to bring Rillaboom. This is just a crazy team. I don't really know what to expect. If they didn't have Torna Tornadus, I think I would actually probably just lead Cried on Walking Wake. Because we can just like overwhelm them with offense. But Tornadus makes me a little bit more spooked out. I guess, though, what would there be their best lead next to Tornadus? Maybe the Zacian? Maybe Ogre Pond, okay. This works for me. I think Golden goes in a pretty good spot. Um, I'm actually thinking about clicking Bleakwind instead of Tailwind on turn one. Like, just Bleakwind make it rain. So then I get to stagger Tailwind by two turns. 
Okay, I'm kind of down for that. Yeah, and they try to taunt us. Okay, works for me. No terror on the Ogre Pond, so this might just be a double KO if I connect. But of course we miss. <laughs> okay, we hit the Tornadoes though, which I actually think is the more important one so that they don't get Tailwind up next turn. But that is a shame because, yeah, I made a pretty solid play there and had the potential to just get a double KO potentially. Potential to get the KO potentially. Uh, either way, though, we denied them Tailwind, so now Coridon should be really well positioned, in my opinion. And one of the cool things in this matchup is, like, I can bring out Coridon to set up the Sun so that your IV Cudgels just don't do very much, right? I'll probably want to switch out Golden Go now, but Ogre Pond's not really too much of a threat. That's Zacian coming out for my opponent. Sure. Okay, I think Lake and Coridon and Wake look insanely good right now. I'm down to just bleak win here. I don't really like I kind of want okay, I keep talking about wake. I didn't bring wake, I have Rillaboom. Uh which is fine. I'm happy to just bleak win and shadow ball here into Ogre Pond. I think Ogre probably Terra's or switches. It's gonna go for the switch instead. Sure. And what's coming out? Ferrigraph. Oh interesting. And we are faster than Zacian, but Bleakwind does noticeable damage there. Drops their speed. Swords Dance comes out, okay. Hmm, I'm a little bit worried about Trick Room right now. Because you could just Trick Room immediately with Frigraph from this bot. If they don't Trick Room this turn, though, I think the Coridon just comes out and sweeps the game. Also, if you don't have Citrus Fairy here, Make It Rain probably just KOs the Frigraph. And they don't have Citrus. Okay, cool. Because they, yeah, I mean, like, Golden Goal honestly walls Ashian decently well. So, we just get a knockout there. They bring Ogre Palm back in. Haunt expires, I just Tailwind, make it rain, and then just wait for the switch-ins. I don't, I don't know if I needed to show that much respect to Rhyperior, but I felt like a Rhyperior in the back could totally sweep me if I went with Tornadus, Wake, Coridon, and Golden Go. Like, you just do so much damage to me, and I don't really have that much defense. No more Taunt. So I'm down to Tailwind here, and actually switch out into Rillaboom, because we don't really need Rillaboom right now. And Golden Go under Tailwind just ignores Follow Me from Ogre Pond, which is nice. Also, I think there's a chance they just Terra Ogre here, to which then you become weak to Grassy Glide. Alright, here's the Terra. Nice. And then now I just bring out Coridon, and I can just Grassy Glide Flame Charge. Beautiful. Yeah, like, Ogre's not really that scary when I have Coridon, uh, since... Coridon resists Ogre really nicely, and I set up the Sun, right? So we get Tailwind set up here. They're gonna Ivy Cudgel. Into the Golden Ghost slot. Yep, they might have doubled up onto that slot, which I think would be a pretty smart play. Uh, they actually Swords Dance again. Okay. Smart, I mean, you deny me a free switch in with that. Uh, with this, I'm happy to switch out into Golden Go. I mean, I think Zacian should, or er, er, Ogre should protect here. I think we actually switch into Coridon here, and then fake out into Zacian. Because Ogre just does no damage here, so if Ogre ends up protecting here, if either end up protecting, I can just double up onto that slot the next turn, and it's a 4v1, so Zacian just doesn't have enough firepower to win this endgame. We were lucky that we've been able to hit all of our bleak wins with this team. Yep, there's the spiky shield. Perfect. Now I just double up onto that slot next turn. Take out into Zacian. And this is just us knowing that Ogre has no offense here, right? Like, what are you going to do? Ivy Cudgel in the sun against two Pokemon that resist it? Oh, that's not scary. Zacian's the clear number one threat here. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. I am down to just go for Collision Course onto Zacian and Grassy Glide. Actually, I think we could just Fire Terra Flare Blitz here and Glide. Um, oh, that does open up the weakness to Ivy Cudgel, though. And I think Glide Flare Blitz should get a knockout onto either Pokemon without Terra, so I'm happy going for this. Yeah, this was their win condition, going for Spiky Shield again. Uh, and then just attacking with Zacian. Like, I'm always happy to double up onto Zacian here because it forces you to click follow me. Cool. Because, like, even if Zacian gets the double protect off, once again, what is Ogre Pond doing here, right? Absolutely nothing. So I can take advantage of the fact that that slot is just useless. Whereas here, I could have lost the game if I thought, oh, hey, like, Ogre Pond just went for protect, so I'm just going to double up into it safely. The reality is that there's still a one-third chance that it just gets that double protect off, right? So now we can just Collision Course and Grassy Glide. Yeah, the main thing here is I think, like, Crydon's an incredibly effective late-game sweeper, and it is really good into Zacian, obviously, as well, being able to... But you, ha you have to get around play rough, right? And so, we were off to a really early start in this game. Like, I think Tornado's Golden Go just put on so much offensive pressure. We did miss that Bleak Wind onto Ogre, but then we were able to connect on Freograph. I was actually a little bit worried about Freograph setting up Trick Room and then getting swept by Zacian under Trick Room, uh, but it turns out two Bleak Winds plus Make Arian was enough to just get the knockout onto that. So, yeah, I'm curious if it was even trying to Trick Room. Like, from my opponent's perspective, maybe you don't want a Trick Room, um, but when you know that I've cried on and Wake, I think it actually made a lot of sense for them to try to attempt it. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Really cool to see a team with Coridon take home a championship in this format. I think this Pokemon is still relatively underexplored and has a lot of potential. You obviously have a lot of Pokemon that can give it trouble right now. And so building around it definitely takes a lot of skill. But I was definitely impressed by its damage output throughout the course of this episode. So thanks so much, as always, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all soon. All right. Peace.